A spokesperson for Alexei Navalny has confirmed the Russian opposition leader's death. Writing on X, the former Twitter, his spokesperson demanded his body be handed over to family. Navalny's death, death was first announced by Russian prison authorities on Friday. Activists in Russia say police have detained more than 100 people nationwide for joining protests in Navalny's memory. Mourners gather on a snowy St. Petersburg night to pay their respects. A photo reads, Alexei Navalny, killed by a fascist regime. Through tears, a supporter quotes the fallen dissenter aloud. A very simple message in case I'm killed. Don't give up. Alexei Navalny, politician and leader of the Russian opposition. And they killed him. Elsewhere, attempts to memorialize Navalny were stamped out. In Moscow, a memorial only lasted a few hours before men in black clothes poured out of unmarked vehicles and tore it down. Local media say the police stood by and watched. Navalny's death isn't just a massive blow to Russia's opposition movement. Many see it as a signal that his arch nemesis, Russian President Vladimir Putin, will stop at nothing to keep tightening his grip on power. Reports of his death, if they're true, and I have no reason to believe it or not, Russian authorities are going to tell their own story. But make no mistake, make no mistake, Putin is responsible for Navalny's death. Putin is responsible. What has happened to Navalny is yet more proof of Putin's brutality. No one should be fooled, not in Russia, not at home, not anywhere in the world. Just one day before his death was reported, Alexei Navalny appeared cheerful as he gave testimony via video link from prison. The next day, Russian state TV read out the official announcement from the Federal Penitentiary Service. That Navalny had fallen ill after going for a walk and lost consciousness. An ambulance crew tried to resuscitate him, but failed. Navalny was transferred to a prison colony above the Arctic Circle in December. It's considered one of Russia's toughest prisons, and he was regularly held in solitary confinement. The opposition leader's team confirmed his death and demanded his body be given to his family. We can get more from Yuri Rochetto, who heads the DW Bureau in Riga, Latvia. This is where our Moscow Bureau relocated after DW was banned from Russia. Yuri, what do we know about the cause of Navalny's death? Well, there is still no clarity as to what exactly Navalny died of, banned, and uh, above all, under what circumstances. Uh, the only thing we have is still the official report from prison number three in the Russian Arctic, where he was. There is also confirmation from Navalny's press secretary, but she also refers to the official report from the prison. In any case, she claims that Navalny was killed. Uh, as for the official line, there is supposed to be a forensic investigation into Navalny's death. We have to wait for the results. Uh, his lawyer and his mother have arrived at the penal colony, colony today earlier. Um, in the meantime, independent Russian media have published some reports from fellow prisoners in penal camp number three. If these reports are to be believed, Navalny may have died earlier than officially reported. Of course, there is also speculation as to if he died of natural causes. His family claims uh, that he was in good health. Uh, Navalny also took part in a court session a few days ago, we saw it just in the report. Online, of course, you could see a cheerful, joking, optimistic man there. Mm. And what about the, the timing then? Is, I mean, it's just a month before national elections in Russia. Absolutely. The time of his death is indeed a special one, Ben, and each other side tries to give it a different interpretation. Um, the political scientists loyal to the Kremlin follow the official version, according to which the death of the Kremlin critic was an accident. They say that Putin doesn't need a murder a month before the election. Uh, some even suggest a Western trace. I wouldn't be surprised if Russian television will be spreading conspiracy theories in which Western secret services uh, would be allegedly involved. 
The question is, of course, what will happen in the coming days and weeks? Uh, we saw arrests earlier in the report. These scenes um, yeah, are very similar to the protest that Navalny organized in Russia in recent years. Given this tense situation, I believe that the last thing Putin needs now is protests, which is why the Russian authorities are likely to be focusing on a climate of fear and intimidation ahead of the presidential elections. Uh, Alexei Navalny's death is likely to intimidate those who still dared to stand up against the Kremlin, because they know that Navalny is not the first person to pay a high price in Russia for his stance. Let's have a look at some others. In February 2015, outspoken Putin critic Boris Nemtsov was shot from behind and killed on a bridge near the Kremlin. The former vice premier of Russia was in Moscow helping to organize a rally against the government. Five Chechnya-born mercenaries were charged over his murder, though the identity of the person who hired them is still unknown. In March 2018, Russian double agent Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia were poisoned in the English town of Salisbury. A UK investigation blamed Russia for the attack. Moscow denied involvement. The Skripals were lucky to survive. The same could not be said of another defector poisoned in the UK. Honourable members will note the echoes of the death of Alexander Litvinenko in 2006. The former Russian agent Alexander Litvinenko fled to London in 2000 and became ill and died in 2006 after drinking tea laced with radioactive polonium-210. A British inquiry found his killing had been ordered at the highest level. Also killed in 2006 was Anna Politkovskaya, a journalist whose reporting during the Second Chechen War saw her threatened and poisoned prior to her execution in the elevator of her apartment block. Another to have survived alleged poisonings is Vladimir Karamurza, a former protégé of Boris Nemtsov and public critic of Putin. He has been imprisoned in Russia since April 2022 for speaking out against the war in Ukraine. From prison, Karamurza remains vice chairman of the human rights group Open Russia, founded by Mikhail Khodorkovsky, a former political prisoner currently exiled for calling for civil reform in Russia. Russia's invasion of Ukraine led to one of the most high-profile suspected assassinations yet, with Putin confidant turned critic Yegevny Prigozhin killed in a plane crash last August. The leader of the mercenary Wagner Group had launched a short-lived rebellion against Russian military leaders two months earlier. Alexei Navalny is the latest figure to be killed after speaking out against Putin's government and arguably the most prominent victim yet. So, Yuri, what does his death mean for the remaining opposition in Russia? Well, Alexei Navalny was a kind of hope in Russia, hope for thousands, if not millions, of Russians who, like him, are against Putin's policies. Uh, they were not as brave as he was, but they knew that somewhere in the met metro in Moscow, at the Avtozavodskaya metro station where he lived, he was going home every day. He, a Russian man who dared to criticize Putin publicly. Um, of course, his return from Berlin to Moscow after the poisoning was also a very strong gesture. Uh, some people said he was crazy after everything that he uh, that was happened to him. Uh, he was coming back. Others saw him as a yeah, Russian Nelson Mandela, risking everything again uh, to be with his people. Uh, this voice of protest has indeed been silenced forever. Um, as for the Russian opposition for the others, I don't think Navalny's death is the end of the political opposition in Russia because there has been no political opposition in Russia for a long time. Uh, Navalny was the only politician who managed to mobilize the masses. Yes, there is still his team, his allies, but they have been living abroad and have been classified as extremists by the Russian authorities, just like him. Yes, he certainly still has his fans among the people in Russia, his supporters, people who celebrate him as a hero, but they do so quietly. But I wouldn't say, Ben, that there is no resistance to Putin in Russia at all. We saw a few weeks ago that not all Russians are united behind Putin. There are presidential elections, you said it, in Russia in a month's time, when Boris Nadezhdin, for example, the only politician who has openly spoken out against the war in Ukraine, wanted to run for president, thousands of Russians stood all over the country to sign their names in support of Nadezhdin and those legally criticized Putin. In the end, Nadezhdin was not allowed to stand uh, in the election, but the whole world has seen other Russians, Russians who think critically to Putin. 
Interesting analysis there from Yuri Rochetto. Thank you very much.